In this experiment I want to have a look at how to turn a metal carbonate into a salt and in this case we're going to try and make from copper carbonate copper sulphate. Let's have a look and see how we go. <laughs> We want to try and make a salt from either a metal oxide or a metal carbonate. In this experiment I've chosen to have a look at making it from a metal carbonate and we're going to have a look at copper carbonate. The reason I've chosen this one is it's a very common ore, although one that is rapidly running out. And I'm going to turn this into and we can choose different acids here. I could either use hydrochloric acid to make copper chloride or I could use sulfuric acid to make copper sulphate. We'll make copper sulphate. So what do we need to do to make this? Well we need some sulfuric acid and what we're going to do is we're going to put that in a beaker and we're going to warm it so the reaction is going to work safely. Before I start I want to put on my safety specs because I'm going to be using acids and let's take a small amount of acid and I'm going to take about 20 centimeter cube of the acid Yeah, 20 centimetre cube of acid. I'll put that safely at the back and pour that into a beaker. I'm using a, a 250ml beaker here. Just get the last drop out there. Right, I want to warm that slightly and then I'm going to put in small amounts of copper carbonate at a time. So I'll get out a small spatula. And I think we're more or less ready to go. Once we've made this, then what we'll do is we'll filter it and we'll collect the salt. So let's have a go. I'll close the air hole. And we can light the burner. And let's now heat the acid up. I don't need it very hot as I've said. We only need it at around about 50 to 60 centigrade and this will just make the reaction work a little better so we can heat that up. Now I'm going to put in the copper carbonate a little bit at a time. Now this is a beautiful colour substance, a sort of green colour. When we add this to an acid we're going to produce carbon dioxide and water. So let's just add a small amount here to the acid and we can see that that disappeared and we've got a blue colour. Now that's not terribly surprising if we got this blue substance in but in fact it is reacting and you can see hopefully the bubbles if I turn it round for you you might be able to see just a little bit more clearly as I add the carbonate it reacting forming copper sulphate and water and carbon dioxide
I do this very carefully because I want to carry on until the copper carbonate no longer reacts and then I know it's all been used up. Already we're getting to see the darker blue colour of copper sulphate appearing. In a different experiment we've looked at making this using copper oxide but in this case it's easier to see the reaction working because the carbonate reacts making this carbon dioxide as well as we can see the dark blue appearing. I'm using here two molar sulfuric acid. That's primarily for safety reasons. Anything really stronger than two molar is considered to be fairly dangerous whereas less than two molar is considered to be relatively safe. But we always have to be careful and use wear safety specs just in case this spits at us. I'm only using a small amount here and it's in a fairly big beaker to make sure that it's not going to sort of overflow. And there's no chance here with this. And you can see each time I'm putting this in it's reacting but we can see the deep blue of the copper sulphate appearing. And we're keeping going doing this until no more reacts. Getting a darker and darker blue which is a very good sign. And it's still reacting quite well. well I think we're actually getting quite close to the end point. It is reacting slower. Having said that it's still producing carbon dioxide. Nearly there. You can see it just sticking here, not reacting terribly quickly. We are really quite close to the end point now. It's much more effective putting this in little bits at a time rather than all at once, which is what some students think are is a better way of actually trying to do it. You know, they believe more is better and uh, this isn't always the case when we're trying to do chemistry experiments. I'm still getting bits sort of left. It's sort of really getting to the end now. I can see some still left. What I'm going to do is take out a glass stirring rod and I'm going to give this a bit of a mix see if I can get it going I'm taking it down because I can get a bit, a bit of mixing on that rather than being above my eye height Well, I think there's still a little way to go here. Let's try a little bit more. Just about reacting. And we can see now it's going sort of very sort of murky and cloudy. And this is suggesting that basically we've reached the end of this reaction. No more carbonates reacting. 
I don't think I'm getting any more carbon dioxide produced. And so I think this has now reached the end point of the reaction. Our next job then is to filter off all this extra carbonate that's unwanted in the experiment. Now, if I'm going to do a filter, then let's take a piece of filter paper. There's several ways of doing this. Some people believe that just folding it in quarters and then opening it up is probably the most the best way of trying to do it. Other people believe in folding it again into smaller bits. It doesn't make an awful lot of difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this now into a filter funnel and I'm going to collect this and I'm going to collect it in it's not going to stay well an evaporating basin now it's not very stable here a reasonable height yep there we go and let's put that in there this is only warm it's not too hot to hold and we'll pour it all in and we'll leave this to filter I've got a little bit more left in there but that's not really going to be worth recovering so we'll leave this to filter for a few minutes and while that's happening what I'll do is I'll go and get some hot water so we can start doing the next bit of the experiment which is trying to crystallize the copper sulfate crystals from the solution. We've left this experiment for about five minutes and the filtration is just about complete and if we have a look down here at the crystals in formed we've got a fair number of copper sulfate crystals formed inside there along with some other bits and pieces. So we finished that little bit and what I've collected at the moment is a small amount of copper sulfate. It's quite concentrated and what we're going to do is we're going to recover the crystals from this. So what we're going to do is I'll put that down safely. I'm going to put some hot water in here. It's easier to do it from here rather than boiling it on the Bunsen burner. And now we're going to put this on top. And let's now heat the water back to boiling. The water's going to boil, it's going to heat the water in this evaporating basin and some of the water in the evaporating basin is then going to come off and that's going to concentrate that still further so that what we can do is get the crystals out and we can then leave them to dry and recover them. And that takes in fact probably a day or so. But at the moment what we're going to do is just heat this up and as the water comes to the boil, which is, is just about doing now, then the heat from that will gently evaporate the water in the evaporating basin. Now we only want to do this gently. There are some students that think this would look much better and work much better if we just heated the evaporating basin directly. But by doing that, what we achieve is driving off too much water and in so doing we make anhydrous copper sulfate or white copper sulfate instead of the nice blue crystals that we want to try and get. 
So already I can see that the water is getting hot, it's condensing on the bottom of the evaporating basin and dripping back down. So already the water in the evaporating basin is becoming warmer and I can see some steam starting to come off. So we'll leave this to run for a few minutes and then we'll have a look and see what we've got. I've left the crystals a short while to cool and crystallise and here we can now see that I've got still a little bit of liquid there but I've got some crystals formed here of pure copper sulphate. They're not particularly big crystals but we have got quite a good yield of these crystals in here. So we've got a fair number of little crystals and I need to leave this now to dry. On the filter paper, which is also dried, you can also see we've got a large number of crystals that didn't manage to get through the filtration process because they'd already started to cool and crystallise on the filter paper. These unfortunately are all mixed up with the copper carbonate as well. So these aren't really quite so useful. And I can see here the lighter green of the copper carbonate mixed in with the dark blue of the copper sulphate. Comparing it with these crystals, these are quite a different colour. So these ones in the evaporating basin are the pure ones and those we could go on and use later in other experiments. Thanks for watching.